So in the cancer field, there have been really four revolutions. So surgery is the first revolution where you remove the primary tumor. And if there's only a primary tumor, that works great. And many patients are cured by surgery. However, when cells leave that primary tumor, surgery doesn't work so well, which brings us to the second revolution, and that's chemotherapy. You give the patient a toxin, and anything that tries to grow is killed. Your tumor, your hair, a lot of things. That actually is still standard of care for most tumors. And it's a tough way to go, but it's often the best we have. The third revolution, which really started in the 1980s, really in earnest in the 1990s, is uh, what we often call targeted therapy. I, I look at the tumor closely, I see that there's a gene I care about that's mutated, and I have a drug that can hit that mutated gene, I'm going to give you that. Overall, however, the tumor has usually found a way around these, and so resistance ar arises. In any case, the tumor is very complicated, and hitting a single target just really hasn't fulfilled all the promise we had hoped. In recent years, the last few years, there's been the fourth revolution, and that's personalized medicine. The idea here is you, patient comes in, you sequence their tumor, you look at all the mutations, okay, and use that to inform therapy. American Cancer Society provided a grant on a very unusual approach using fruit flies, Drosophila, creating models and screening for drugs. This is the sort of work that uh, federal funding is really not designed to uh, fund because it's outside of the box. Uh, we couldn't guarantee that it was going to work. And the ACS was very enthusiastic and they were very supportive and that has really allowed us to push this whole idea forward. Through the confidence and the support of the ACS, we've now been able to open up the Center for Personalized Cancer Therapeutics, which is truly disruptive technology and truly different in which we take individual patients, we sequence their tumors, we take all the mutations, even if there are 10 of them, put them all into flies. And with this fly avatar that we create, personalized fly avatar, we use robotics to screen those flies through thousands of drug combinations with the idea of coming back to the patient with specific treatment recommendations at a level of sophistication that really nobody else is doing at the moment. I'm very excited about this and we really could not have done this without the support of the ACS. What's unique about the ACS and why they're different from the other funding agencies that I, that I apply to is they have a unique combination of tolerance for risk taking, and we're certainly a big risk. Building fruit fly uh, avatars of patients is a little out of the box, but at the same time, the ACS is woven into the cancer community in a way that I'm not aware any other uh, agency, uh, federal or private is. Our research could not be done without the support of the American Cancer Society. This sort of freedom to explore new ways and get at what has now become a major scourge in our society is very much appreciated. We could not do our work without your help.